Equity and inclusion are vital for the City of Greensboro's ability to grow and innovate in such a fast-changing environment. One Greensboro is a monthly show that highlights some of the ways the Office of Equity and Inclusion honors the observances listed on our heritage calendar and spotlights a City of Greensboro employee in a segment we call The One. These observances are an integral part of the National Equal Employment Opportunity and Civil Rights Program and encourage us to live as one people, one community, one Greensboro. Welcome to today's episode of One Greensboro. Today we are visiting the Guilford Green Foundation and the LGBTQ Center. I am so, so thrilled to take a tour today. We'll also be talking to several people about the history of pride in Greensboro and in general. And we'll also be talking about Greensboro pride and exactly what's going on with the parade are we gonna have a parade? Are we not gonna have a parade? And also what's gonna be happening in the fall. And today we're talking to Jennifer Roop, the executive director of this beautiful facility. And she is actually gonna take us on a tour and I believe we're starting at our first location. Absolutely. Hi, Jennifer. Hi, so nice to see you and so welcome nice to, to the LGBTQ you. Center. Thank you, I'm so excited. I could not make it to the grand opening and I feel so special I'm getting my own personal yes, tour. you are so getting a awesome. private tour Yay. today. So we did open, had a great ribbon cutting uh, on January 17th of this year. Uh, we are located here at 121 North Green Street in downtown. Um, this beautiful space used to be a Quiznos. I remember that. Yes. I used and, to order from here often. Right. <laughs> and so after it was a Quiznos, it sat abandoned for about two years. So when we found it, it was a dirty abandoned Quiznos wow. <laughs> that that we've been able to transform uh, into a beautiful LGBTQ beautiful. center here in the heart of downtown. So we're actually standing in our lounge area. Okay. And this is all available just so that people have an opportunity to come in, sit in a space downtown that is welcome and affirming of their identities, and just, uh, just have a place where they don't have to worry about being judged. And so this is just a nice casual place to hang out and it's the first thing that people see when they come in. So we try to really create a welcoming environment. Here. And it is, and you can't go wrong with the things you have here. You so yeah. this is a good socializing right. setup. Perfect. And then, and then we can change it out when we have other events here and, and have other catering food here and stuff. So oh, it, it really, it's like, it's the kitchen of our center. Absolutely. Sort of, yeah. And you get to also see everything that's kind of happening Absolutely. outside in yeah. downtown Greensboro. Yeah. So. Again, we're in this beautiful location downtown. So it's so nice to be able to have a meeting here with people um, and just sit and enjoy our downtown. Wonderful. Now I know there's some other things you wanted to show Absolutely. me as well. Do you yeah. want to go ahead yeah, and Yeah, let's go walking? on a tour. Wonderful. So Jennifer, where are we now? I see this beautiful board with lovely colors. Tell us about the room we're in now. So right now we are in the large conference room which seats up to 50 people. It's a flexible space so we can set it up like this in different quads or a big conference table or we can seat it uh, up to 75 people uh, with no tables and in rows where we've shown movies uh, and things like that on our big screen TV. So this is a really flexible meeting space with all the AV and technology people need that we use for other LGBTQ organizations organizations in town um, are able to use this space for free. And knowing Greensboro like I know it, you also kept some of the original brick Absolutely. in here, which yeah. is just gorgeous. Absolutely. I love it. I love it. I love yeah, it. Yeah, the tall ceilings and the brick um, were all thanks to throwing a head sledgehammer through the walls that were here and finding this beautiful structure underneath. So we're Absolutely. really happy with it. And this board, tell me about this. Yeah, so these are the donors that contributed to the capital campaign that built this center. Um, this space is 100% paid for by our local community and donors and supporters of Guilford Green Foundation who wanted to make sure that this space was available for the LGBTQ community 
far into the future. So this is the legacy that they built for our community. Wow, so basically you all have these donors who have contributed, but they haven't stopped. And I'm sure you still look for donations. Correct. correct? Uh, absolutely. We fundraise every year. And many of these people have been longtime donors and supporters of the foundation and now of the LGBTQ Center. But this board specifically represents the people who paid for wow. this project. That's phenomenal. Yeah. That's phenomenal. I'm so happy to see you all yeah. in here. So, What's next? I see a refrigerator, so I yes. feel we're leading to yep. another room. We are, yes. I'm excited before you even say anything. <laughs> this wall, please tell me about the history of this wall and what this wall means. Well, we really wanted um, to have some kind of mural in this space that really reflected the history and the all of the identities in our community. And so we commissioned local artist, Gina Franco, whose work is very popular very. around town. And we kind of told her what we were looking for and she came up with this like great concept and it gets a lot of uh, mentions and likes and things uh, on social media and a lot of uh, pictures get taken in front of this wall. Oh, there will be one oh, for me. Yeah, yes, yeah. it will be. Yeah, yes. um, so everybody loves this wall. We absolutely love it. And it is just, it brightens up this back space here. This is a second, as you can see, we've got another conference table here. So this is a second smaller meeting space so that again, we can have flexible meetings throughout um, the building that can be used for other organizations. And there's uh, a full service, almost full service kitchen. There's a kitchen in between yeah, with we the just refrigerator and- Full service kitchen wow. so that you bring catering in and stuff, you can, you can do all of that. So we're really here as a resource, not just for the LGBTQ, LGBTQ community members, but we're also a resource for other LGBTQ organizations. Yeah, we really want to be that hub here uh, to bring everybody together. We're actually the only LGBTQ organization with paid staff. Wow, I yeah. did not know that. Yeah, and there are lots of other great organizations like Pride that you talked to um, earlier. Um, so there are lots of great organizations that are volunteer led. So we see it as part of our responsibility to give back to the community by providing like the space and the resources to help support those. Wonderful. Yeah. Well, I know with two of our internal organizations with the city, we definitely will come down yeah. here more often. Awesome. Once everything lifts, we'll be down here. Yeah, so. great. And I see some books. I'm yeah. always intrigued by books. Um, do you also have a library as we well We do, too? yeah. So we have a queer library. It is uh, all of the books, and we have over 400 titles, that uh, books and DVDs that are wow. all LGBTQ themed or by LGBTQ authors mm -hmm. um, or actors in the, in the DVDs. So this is a place we feel it's very important um, to be able to uh, catalog and keep the voices of LGBTQ mm. people. So our library is a place where people can come and check out books. Mm -hmm. um, the catalog is listed online on our website, so you can look and see what we have. Okay. So if you're interested in history, fiction, nonfiction, uh, or a, a book that you might want to read to your child, we've got a little bit of everything. Here. Wow, and the website is the Guilford Green Foundation. Correct, guilfordgreenfoundation.org. .org, Dot .org. Yeah. that's simple enough. Yeah. Okay, great. Easy enough. Great, yeah. you've been a fabulous host. This is a beautiful center. Thank you so much for all the work that you continue to do in the community here. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Welcome to this edition of The One. The One is an intimate conversation with City of Greensboro employees that are working to create a culture of oneness in our organization and our city. This conversation will allow you to get to know them and hear their thoughts on our journey to create One Greensboro. Our employee this month is Lana Skripnik of the Communications Department. Welcome, Lana. How are you? I'm great. How are you? Thanks Good. for having me. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being here. My first question that I typically ask people, tell us a little bit about yourself and what your role is here with the City of Greensboro. Sure. So my name is Lana. I've been in the city for just a little over two years now. Um, 
seems like longer and shorter at the same time. It does, because <laughs> we do a lot well, together. We do, oh, um, and with everything the last few months. Um, so I handle internal communications. I'm responsible for our G Team newsletter, um, maintaining CityNet, and just helping employees know what's going on in our organization. Wonderful. And you also, don't forget that, you are an employee resource group leader for the city. I am. Do you want to tell us a little bit about yes. that? Yes. So I co-lead the um, LGBTQ Plus Employee Resource Group along with Facebook. Alan Fletcher from um, Parks and Rec, and that's been really rewarding. It's really great to bring a diverse group of employees together, kind of share um, what being part of the community is about, um, gather allies, and put some education out there. So I'm Wonderful. really excited. And thank you so very much for helping us with our inaugural resource groups. Thank you for that. What would you say, besides the employee resource group, is the most interesting project that you're working on right now? Um, so right now in particular, um, in addition to the resource group, shameless plug for June, Pride Month is coming, so we will have a um, webinar version of um, a training on how to be more inclusive to the LGBTQ plus community with our workplace here at the city. Um, Additionally, I'm working on a face mask project right now with everything going on, um, so it's a little different. I get to step outside of my internal role just a little bit and um, reach out to the community. So we've put together basically a resource database for people looking to obtain face masks. Um, there's a form you can go to on the website and fill out if you're a maker or seller of face coverings. And if somebody's searching for a mask and they don't really know where to find one, they don't have, you know, they can't make it themselves, they don't have anybody they know making it, they can access this list of other providers and we're kind of matching people up according to needs. So that's wow. been pretty great. That is so cool. I tell you, when we got here, you and I both had our face coverings on as we are socially distanced. Yes. But that <laughs> sounds like such a rewarding project. So thank you. Thank you. Who would you say inspires you? I am one of those people that finds inspiration in a lot of different things and a lot of different people. Um, but specifically talking about pride and just a bigger social justice conversation, I would say, you know, people like Marsha P. Johnson, Harvey Milk, people that were really on the front lines of leading the movement, I find very inspirational. The bravery it took to kind of stand up to oppression and really declare this is who I am and I'm not ashamed about it. I'm going to speak out even if, you know, I face persecution persecution or um, bodily harm or things like that, um, I, I find that very inspiring. Wow, thank you. Thank you for sharing that. that. Who would you most like to swap places with for a day? For a day and only for a day. For a day. Only for a day. I don't think I could handle the job long term. Okay, I can't wait. <laughs> I can't wait to hear this. Um, so let's just say I would love to be a top elected official somewhere high up um, and really be able to introduce legislation um, to benefit marginalized communities, LGBTQ plus and others. Um, and to be able to really push some progressive change, I think our country could really benefit from. Absolutely, good. And how is celebrating LGBTQ plus month a step towards one Greensboro in your opinion? Um, so Pride, um, LGBTQ plus Pride Month is a big deal to our community because even in 2020 now, there's still a lot of marginalization. There's still a lot of having to hide who you are in spaces um, because you just don't know whether they're going to be welcoming, whether you're going to be safe or not. So it's important because one, it celebrates the progress we've made and how far we've come in this um, fight for equality, but it also it allows people to have a safe space to just be themselves because as members of this community the world is not really set up for you to be safe to be yourself right now unfortunately um so it's really a safe space to just kind of be able to let all of these masks we have to wear down and be with each other be with the community with each other and allies and be able to celebrate who we are celebrate how far we come and also build community and um, organize and be able to talk about what changes still need to be made and find um, power behind that movement Wonderful, thank you. How can we create a true one Greensboro culture for the entire city of Greensboro? So that's a tall order. Um, I really do believe in um, to create widespread change, you have to start small and you have to start local and then you have to build out. And I think really what it comes down to is just having conversations um, and being able to listen is just as important as being able to talk. Um, so really 
um, what we're doing with ERGs and what we do with the city, with our trainings and as a whole, um, being able to one, provide that platform for people who are part of a marginalized community to be able to lift their voices and talk about their experience and also provide a safe space um, to share that and to have people that are listening um, and having an exchange of information and learning from each other. And then from there, identifying kind of um, the things that we want to lift up to maybe create new um, protocols or you know, new rules for employees or even at the city. Um, but I think it all starts with just sitting down and having these conversations because I think sometimes we're afraid to be able to say what exactly needs changing. Um, and sometimes we're afraid to listen, right? Because right. we, um, you know, we try our best and we maybe don't want to offend anybody. We just don't know how to have these conversations sometimes because they can be personal and they can be uncomfortable. Um, but I really think just coming together and having Absolutely. them is very important. And I agree. And I think when we have those conversations, I know it can be rewarding for us all in the end. And yeah. so I'm so glad you took the time today to have this conversation with me. And um, again, open up and let our community know about Lana and also about the great work that you're doing in your role and also supporting some of the projects that we have with the Office of F Equity and Inclusion. So thank you so very much. Absolutely. Lana. Glad thank to you. do it. Thank Thanks. You. Now we're in a part of our interview sessions that I absolutely love. For the last few years, I have been participating as a city representative in Greensboro Pride, and I am so thrilled to talk to one of my favorite people that help organize Greensboro Pride, Paul Marshall. And he's gonna talk to us today about the history of Pride and exactly what has been going on with planning in the last year. Welcome, Paul, how are you? Thank you, good, thank you. How are you, Maria? I am wonderful, good. wonderful. My first question for you is, could you just tell the audience a little bit about the history of Greensboro Pride? This is going to be the fifth, this was going to be the 15th year of Pride in Greensboro. We started in a little park over what used to be Festival Park, now LeBauer Park, and we had 200 people and three vendors. Mm. And in 15 years, we've grown to 20,000 people, about 180 vendors, and we are take up the whole blocks of South Elm Street. Yes, you do. And it felt like I talked to all of those 180,000 <laughs> exactly people right. last year. Exactly. So, and tell us again, I know things have changed a little bit with everything that's going on in the world, but tell us what some of the plans were going to be for Pride, because I don't believe you all are going to be able to have it this year, correct? That's correct, Maria. After a lot of contemplation and talking to our vendors and sponsors, and you well know that bringing 20,000 people into downtown Greensboro, there's a lot of moving parts with the city and the fire department and the police department. And um, we just felt like to be safe and dealing with our sponsors, that the safest thing to do this year uh, would be to cancel both events, the parade, the first ever parade, we were so excited. I was so excited. I know, this was gonna be the first Pride Parade in downtown Greensboro, and, then we're, and that was gonna be in June. Then we we're gonna have the festival in October with a big street party and um, after party. So, so is anything planned right now? Anything virtual? Because I know you all usually have the bingo and some other events. Are you planning anything? That well, you can unfortunately, talk about? bingo's been canceled. I think they're working on a virtual bingo, okay. uh, which should be good. And in addition to that, we hope to do um, a virtual parade. Maybe we're still in the planning stages of that, and hopefully by the fall, things will be loosened up enough that we can do like a block party down down on South Elm Street. Good, good. But it'll not be the, the full pride. But then the 15th anniversary will be in 2021 instead of. Absolutely, and we're still gonna have a bottle oh, in 2021. Definitely. Yes, definitely. we will, yes we will. Now, my question for you, tell us a little bit about what you do with um, the Greensboro Pride um, as, as far as helping out and, and planning. I am, uh, for the probably the last 10 years, I've been the uh, director and uh, I sit on the board of, board of directors and you know everything from working with the city and planning to the you know we're out there on that Saturday rain or shine and you know one of my favorite things Maria is I remember you a couple years ago when we had 
pride after the storm. Oh, yes. And, <laughs> Are you going to tell this You know, we were holding tents we down holding and, tent. and people's hair was blowing and it was cold and, but we still carried it off and it was a, yes, we a did. very successful event. Yes, we did. And last year was so much fun because I know the city moved a little bit closer inward. Exactly. And it was a little warm. Right. And you all were there handing out water. It's just such um, a festive time and, and so much it's, love in the exactly. air. Exactly. It's very it. inclusive. Very you know? inclusive. Um, and that's one of the one of our goals is to make it as inclusive as possible. And um, over these years, kind of talk to us a little bit about what changes you've seen in Pride. Well, besides um, the, the amount of people, I think the amount of people certainly. But in addition to that, um, we're bringing in not only the LGBT people, but as I said, it's more inclusive. Absolutely. And you know, we feel like that. You know, there's probably as many of our straight allies as there are gay people coming now, and we've tried to make it a little more uh, of an educational event. Mm -hmm. We have people there that are from law firms for people that want to adopt children, or planners, uh, estate planners. Uh, we even had a funeral home a couple years ago because there's a need for LGBT people there that, that need to make future plans. Absolutely. So that's one of the things, so it's, you know, instead of being just a party, it's become more of an educational event. Now the as party well as, is still good. That's now. true. Because the true. music's good and let's not and forget that food is delicious because exactly. the vendors. Exactly. So, well, Paul, I hate everything is canceled, but as always, you can count on the Office of Equity and Inclusion in the city of Greensboro to continue, and we continue appreciate to partner that. with you. We and whatever so we can much. do to kind of get the word out when we start again, please contact us. I'll website. do it. We'll do it. And finally, I am so excited to come to the last part of our interviews today, and we are actually talking with Brian Coleman, and he is the Vice Chair of Alternative Resources of the Triad, and we're going to talk a little bit about history and a little bit about exactly what happens in the month of Pride, and especially in the month of June, in which we are embarking on now. So I'm so excited because I've been told he was a pretty good historian, so I know he's going to tell me some things I didn't know and some things you all didn't know as well. So welcome, Brian. Thank you. How are you? Oh, I am absolutely super. It's a, I would like to say it's a beautiful Friday, but it's kind of rainy like it has been all week. But it's still beautiful because we're it's here talking about the best thing possible. The best thing possible is about to come up here in June, exactly. which is Pride Month. Pride Month. So tell us and kind of maybe start from, because there's some great things and I'm sitting behind mm -hmm. one of them. Tell us a little bit about the history of Pride Month, if you don't mind. And so of course, as we know, LGBTQ people have been around this entire time. If there's been people, there's been LGBTQ people. Um, and a lot of that through our through the LGBTQ history has was uh, was underground. Um, it wasn't brought to the light as you know we affectionately have now embraced the term in the closet. So that's exactly where a lot of the LGBTQ people were up until. Um, oh, please don't get my, the date wrong. June the twenty sixth mm, mm -hmm, of nineteen sixty nine. Yes. Um, there was uh, two. Uh, trans individuals who were being harassed um, at the Stonewall Inn. The bar had been raided by the police, which was an irregular occurrence. And this particular night, a one Miss um, Johnson P. Jo uh, excuse me, Marsha P. Johnson mm -hmm. um, and Miss Riviera decided that enough was enough. Right. Um, and those two trans women are credited for starting what we now know as the modern day LGBTQ um, movement. Um, and I think uh, it's ironic that that movement was started um, by a African-American trans female and a Latino trans female. And I don't think many people know that. A I'm lot glad of you brought that up. A lot of people don't know that. There was riots, protests prior to the Stonewall, um, but Stonewall will get the most attention because it caused the most fuss. Right. Um, as, and, I, and I hate to make this comparison, but... Um, the same situation happened in 1969 that happened about three days ago. Right. You know, what, what was a citizen's giving their, their opinions um, as the Constitution is digress of their grievances with the government, that's what was happening. It was a protest. And then, for some reason, our government feels that it's necessary to bring a police action to a civil protest. Right, right. So what does that do? It doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure that's going to escalate the situation. Right. 
And that's exactly what happened. Um, so uh, Ms. Johnson, Ms. Johnson and Ms. Riviera threw their bricks, they made their noise, and um, it got noticed. Um, and with that, I think because of who they, now this is just my personal opinion, I don't have any facts to, to base that on, but my personal opinion is, is that it was because of who these two individuals were, their background, they knew what it was going to take to burden and to make it right. and to make that miss mm -hmm. um, Riviera being of Latino descent miss Marsha P Johnson being of african-american descent those two individuals knew firsthand yes. in their face on a daily basis of what a struggle of being a minority was in this country right um, and a lot unfortunately a lot of our younger generations now um, it's now 2020. Mm -hmm. We are 51 years at this point past the Stonewall riots, or will be in a few weeks. Right. Um, and we are still seeing that the, um, not everyone's minds have been changed. Not everyone has been opened up right. to understand right. that we are who we are regardless of the presentation, color of our skin, mm -hmm. who we love. Um, we are we are people um, and that's what social justice is all about and that is exactly what exactly. social justice exactly. is about um, and so that was those people also knew whether it was the Stonewall riots um, the civil rights uh, riots that came before after during that yesterday mm -hmm. um, we're, we're still experiencing those that thing is is citizens understanding that our government works from the bottom to the top right um, and then voices have to be heard issues have to be addressed um, because the minority is a minority only when we're on our own. Do you think those issues are being addressed in 2020 from your opinion? Do you think we're there? No, I don't think we're there. I think that we are get, we're making baby steps. Mm -hmm. I think when um, it's a generational thing, um, as those generations l pass, pass to the next world from this one, we are hoping that they don't teach that hate and that bigotry to the to the generations that they brought right. up, um, but we're seeing that they have. So what we need is more people yes. to know and more to allies. teach mm -hmm. and allies mm -hmm. to know that people are people, humans are humans. We all cut the same, bleed the same. Um, it's just what's behind closed doors, or perhaps it's the color of our skin, that doesn't make us different. Right. Do you think it's an awareness issue? Because you talked a lot about history and gave us that good foundation, but what can we do besides shows like this to create more of an awareness so our community, especially our Greensboro community, can know how to be better, better allies? Yeah, so absolutely. So a great man once said, those who do not remember their history are destined to repeat it. Yes. Um, and that's here today, sitting, talking, me and you, is exactly what we're doing. We are remembering that history. We are recognizing those who paved the path for us. Um, where are we in that struggle to, to equality for everybody? Drum roll, I can't wait to hear this. My personal opinion is out of four stars, I'll give you one. Really? I'll give you one, I'll give, I'll give this country, I'll give the world one star. Wow. Out of a four star of, of accepting everybody as they are, who they are in the presentation that they choose um, because I would like to say it's more than that. And if you look at the outward appearance, a lot of the LGBT community, we have been stuck in the closet. Right. Um, some of us have had the privilege to be able to mask who we really are and just go about right. life, you know, and what they do is behind closed doors. But what people need to recognize is, is the history of everything. You know, from an individual to a thumbtack, Everything that we touch and come in contact with has that history, has a rich history. And not to, to repeat those incidents, not to repeat that ignorance, not to teach that bigotry to the generations coming, you first have to know right. where it came from, the source of that hatred, the source of that ugliness. Um, and to have people who feel that they're above somebody else or better than somebody else, um, just because they don't live the same way, they don't love the same way, or they don't look the same way, it, we're, we're not there. We're not there in our world leaders, we're not there in our common citizens, and in some cases, we're not there even in our own very own communities.
Is there anything that you would like to highlight that your organization could do to help um, kind of further us in um, being, and I hate to use this as a quote, but more woke as far mm -hmm. as, <laughs> you know, things such as we've been talking about. Is there anything your organization does? Because I know you host something that's pretty fun. We're not going to have that this year, <laughs> no, but do you want to tell so. them at least about that? Absolutely. Um, again, my, I am Brian Coleman. I'm the vice chair of the Alternative Resources of the Triad, and we do are the parent company and the promoters and the organizers for Greensboro Pride and all the things that are branded such. Um, we also work very closely with the Guilford Green Foundation um, here in Greensboro um, to produce uh, the Green Queen Bingo um, that Greensboro has come to know and love. And I am Fuchsia Rage. I am the Green Queen and I am the hostess uh, for the Green Queen uh, Bingo. It is a beautiful thing and I think that would tie us in, into your question is people don't understand that um, it's uh, not all gay men dress like women, not all gay females dress like men. It's an identity. That is an individual. Um, you know, a bird can't choose their colors, but me, I can. I can, I can put on the plumage that I want that you to know who I am and what I stand for. Um, so I would encourage everyone to do that. When everyone lives their true life. Absolutely. When everyone lives to the truest part of their abilities, are there for their, their, their community, um, are there for their individual. You know, a change starts with a person, um, not necessarily with a group. Um, so go out into the world, do what you do every day. And when you see that um, maybe it's an obvious um, a gay man or woman, or maybe it's an obvious trans individual, and you hear those smart comments, those derogatory comments, you know, the, the saying is, is no one gets their feelings hurt unless it gets hurt. Mm. That's not true. That's not true. Because when I hear it, it hurts my feelings. Right. Um, and that goes for every walk of life, every community. Um, if you see an injustice, you need to correct it because as it's not popular to say, but it is a thought that we, we have had. If you're not a part of the solution, you're a part you of the are problem. a part of the problem. I agree. Um, so step up, take notice, even if that does not affect you directly, because you don't know, you may be that one who has that trans child and then it will affect you directly. You may have that gay or lesbian child that is going to direct affect you directly. And how you treat that person will be how that person treats the next one. Absolutely. And, and how I, that person treats the next one. Will be, it's, it's a cycle. It's, it's a, a cycle. cycle. And I can truly mm. say from everything that I know in my work and also just growing up here in Greensboro, the two organizations we've talked with today, you know, you all and also Guilford Green being here talking mm. with them, that's where you get the help if you need training, if you need questions that are out there, or even just coming by to learn and create exactly. that awareness and become that ally if you don't even know what it's about. Hopefully we can get you in the right directions by talking to either one of your organizations. Absolutely. And what, and what Alternative Resources does with Triad Pride is we, we're more of a, of, of a community-based um, situation. We, we create, um, not so much this year, unfortunately, but we create those social gatherings, those safe places, whether it be Pride, whether it be, you know, this was the very first year that Greensboro was going to be able to see an LGBTQ pride parade on yes. our streets in Greensboro since 1996. Absolutely. And from the person that used to run the Greensboro Holiday Parade, I was <laughs> hyped. I could, I, I was getting ready, I had my spots right on the street. But again, 2021 will be our year. 2021 as, as will said. be, a, it will yeah, be it has year. been since 1996 since Greensboro has actually seen an I LGBTQ remember. pride parade I here in Greensboro. That. And that, of course, was done by Pride North Carolina, which is completely something else now. Um, and I think it's beautiful. I think that I think it's beautiful that our state has its very own pride as a collective. Mm -hmm. And I think it's also beautiful that the, the, uh, the um, cities, communities, and municipalities of the state have their own. We have Greensboro. We have Winston. We have Alamance. We have Burlington. So you see it popping up um, all over the state and all over the country of people taking pride in who they are. And that pride just isn't for those of us who live under the rainbow. 
that pride is for everyone. Take pride in what that word means. Take pride in what that action is when you go out into the world and you present yourself as you want the world to see you. And then you need to expect that the people you come in contact with respect you for who you are and the presentation in which you made. They don't need to understand. Right, just the respect. Just the respect. You, you know, if you're, not an L if you're not of a minority, you know, today's focus is LGBTQ. If you're not of the LGBT community, to be able to relate mm -hmm. is not something that, unless you're in that community, that particular community, you're not going to be able to relate to those feelings. But what you can be is a force between that community and the ugliness in the world. Be that barrier. Be that person that stands in between the ugliness that is created and the beautifulness on the other side. That's the gap. Stand in that that's gap. the gap. That's the gap. That's the gap that needs to be bridged, whether it's our LGBT community, our Latino community, our African American community, our elderly community, our disabled community. We are a people as one. Absolutely. And a people as one is we're a little divided right now. We are, but I'm hoping, especially as the equity and inclusion officer for the city, that topics like this that we choose to do every month centered around our heritage calendar, and you've done a beautiful job at summarizing everything, and I thank you so, oh, will help you. to bridge that gap. Yeah. Because I can truly say, I take pride in being an ally. I do my part, but I know I can do more. So thank you so very much, oh, Brian. This was much. so inspirational, and I know there will be some people that learn several things from what you had to say today. Oh, so, so thank glad. you. Thank, thank you. you.